The only problem is you're going to have to verify over to YouTube. I am broadcasting, I think. Let's find out. It's now up and running. This is interesting. It's almost like I did have it set up. That was, I was going to say, that was pretty quick. Let me go to YouTube and see if I actually am. <laughs> That'd be good. I am absolutely live. <clears throat> huh. I was apparently set up. Well... Thank God for small favors, right? Yep. Just make sure you turn your volume down. <laughs> I am right now doing that. Yep. All right. We're up and running. Excellent. Let me just fire off a uh, post to War Gamers. The virtuous, noble, and ultimately victorious French stream is live. Nothing like unfounded belligerence to make your afternoon. <laughs> All right, and finally on my Twitter feed, I think Brant will handle the rest. You sent a link over to Brant? I did not. Okay. Send him one of your feed. All right. Sorry about all that technological fiddle-faddle, folks. Um, let's begin and do this the right way. This is Cyrano and Panzer Day from Armchair Dragoons, and we are here back for Saturday Night Fights. And we're going old school. I like it this way. This is the John Tiller software game, Battle of Salfeld from Camp from Napoleonic Campaigns, Jena Auerstadt. And this is a game, quite honestly, that Doug has beaten me a lot at. And that's okay. We learn from our mistakes. Um, <laughs> the story, as we pull back a little bit to show the map, is that... Napoleon's army has invaded Thuringia through the Alps. And this is the far... Not through the Alps. Well, through the Thuringian Alps is what they were called. Through the forest and those hills. And this is the far left of the French advance under the uh, legendary Marshal Lan. And they've been the first ones to come firing through these Thuringian passes. And they didn't know where the Prussian army was. The Prussian army had intended to outflank the French to the left, to the French left, but they were 
remarkably surprised by the speed of the French advance, and so they were wrong-footed. Um, unfortunately, in a lot of ways, for f the Prussians, one of their best commanders is sitting right here at Saalfeld, uh, the one guy who knew how to and was willing to fight Napoleon and his troops. And so this is one of the early battles in the campaign that would lead to the culmination at Jena Auerstadt. And so I've got this core that sits all the way up in these hills, and they're going to advance this way and take on the Prussians. Turn on the flag so you can see that Saalfeld sits right there. Uh, I was in Saalfeld a little under two years ago, and I can tell you that that town is a lot bigger now. It, uh, it has its own McDonald's. That'll tell you how far along in civilization it's come. But uh, let me get moving so that this doesn't take all day. I will say we have fog of war on. If you're watching my feed, you're going to see only what my troops see, and the same for Doug. Okay, now how much of this do I remember? One of the things that I do recall is that in some very real ways, this is for the French a foot race because, and this is one of the stories that Doug and I tell each other, we, uh, I, I, I am given in my own way to wanting to pursue victory point locations. I'm an old school war gamer and I want to chase them. They are bright and shiny and lovely. And uh, unfortunately in this game, that is not a wise proposition. There aren't enough points in those victory locations to get you the win. Yeah, found that out the hardest of possible ways. And it's interesting because the way this battle is set up, um, and I remember I've actually driven this distance, the uh, French are debouching. This, this is a slope that, you know, maps are great, and these are lovely maps, and I like them a lot. But this slope is severe in real life. Um, I remember coming down it and thinking, holy cow, because I, and I really wanted to get a shot coming out of these hills here, down into the valley and down over here to Salfeld, but the traffic along the modern road is fairly ghastly. For those who are watching my feed, you may notice that I've got these troops highlighted. This is one of the nice features that John Tiller software lets you do, which is namely keep track of your organization, which matters a remarkable amount for morale purposes. What did we do here? Oh, yeah. All right. Always, if you would. I'm all about skirmishers, but knowing that my friend Doug is not going to stick around long enough for me to shoot at him if he can get away with it. At the start of the game, this entire regiment is broken up into skirmishers. It's something really have to undo. Yeah, no problem. Take your time. Good. And I imagine you lot. Yep. I get it. They came down from the hills, wondering where the Prussians were, and throwing up a King Hell skirmisher screen. I know where the Prussians are now.
looking at my reinforcement. Over to Doug. Oh, I got some. Oh, okay, I got you guys. Didn't realize you're coming this turn. Now over to Doug. Alrighty. Now we're playing this in phased mode, folks, which means it's going to take a little while longer to make its way through a turn. But Doug and I have discovered it's probably... This is his defensive fire phase. Let's see if he's got anybody to shoot at me. Uh, no, not really at this point. So this will be a quick one. Yep, as will my offensive fire phase. Followed by my, yeah, my melee phase. And that'll take you over to... That should take us to... Movement. Allied movement. Let's see what he's got. Brandt has declared that we are now starting war. See, the nice thing about this is I can watch my chat channel while you're moving. Yes, yes, I will have more immediate responses, Brant, to your snarky comments. Please attempt to do everything you can to distract Doug. unnerving like this because I what's I, that I know you're doing something <laughs> well yeah I usually am doing something that much is true I usually am doing something and you guys will note that Jim's guys and my guys don't really look the same. Um, I am running... In fact, our maps probably don't look the same. Uh, in that I am running some mods on mine. And... Uh, spent some time not too long ago... Uh, working up a counter mod of my own. Yeah, I saw you were messing with that. Uh, Brant indicates that whether you're doing something illegal, immoral, or unethical, well. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually using the uh, pretty standard terrain mod. Uh, that I that I have come to love so very much. I was thinking about loading in the Labat counter mod, but decided to stick with these. Yeah, I've got my mod that I worked up that kind of looks more like a period map than anything else. That's not a bad thing. Hey, take a look at that. I shall look at it after the game. Speaking of uh, illegal, immoral, and unethical. giving folks a 
brief tour of the battlefield as it exists today. As I say, Salfeld, which is down here, has expanded dramatically both sides of the Sal River, which is what this river is flowing through here. And the, the really crazy bit is that these passes still look very much this way. In fact, if we go all the way up here to the north end of the battlefield, uh, Krosten, Bulwitz, and Wolsdorf, as well as Graba, are still identifiable as, as they are in this map. Um, I was very disappointed in this battlefield at the south end, but by the time you get up to the north end, it, it is really in good shape from what it would have been in October of 1805, 1806. Sorry. Alrighty. There we go. Defensive fire. Sure. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, we're not going to have much of that. All you. Want to shoot at me? Okay, I know you want to. Uh, I want to, but I'm not sure I got much to shoot with. Nope. All right. Nope. How about some melee? All yarn. French movement. Look at that, folks. We're already on turn two of 18, so we're rolling right along. For those who don't know the Tiller game system, it is a system that measures their units in battalions. Um, I know I said regiments earlier, that's wrong. It measures their units in battalions. And cavalry is tip oh, it's it's interesting. It's one of the great design choices that the individual folks who design these scenarios make but more often than not they put out cavalry into squadrons but i've seen them mess them up into regiments too yeah and the the really weird thing is that when you do cavalry breakdown yes um they're labeled as squadrons Yes. Which is a problem when they really are squadrons. Yes. When notionally they should be going to something like half squadrons or troops. Right. Yeah, I mean, the, for again, for those who don't know, and I, I don't know how many people that is these days, the Tiller games all originally derive from the Battleground games very successful series in the early days of all this dating back to the 1990s and oh hey there handsome who's daddy <laughs> who are you um and as they've evolved the closest parallel that and doug and i have discussed this for some time this is a system whose closest parallel is the is the Labatai series? There are of course some significant differences. Don't get me wrong, but you know I would say that that's the closest. And as a consequence, it's got some of the hink in terms of scale. You know how big is any one thing, and how much can fit in a given square in a given hexagon. I still think it's the best game going for the purpose, though. Uh, what other presents do I get this turn? Ooh, how dramatic. All right. If it... Oh, hey. Alrighty. How you all doing? Still got nobody to shoot at. I'm 
let folks in on a little bit of tactical doctrine and thinking. My guy's got a hundred troops here. Ooh, the Schimmel thinning boys. Nice to see you. Um, he's, typically, if you look at these double X's up here, the, the old rule from the uh, Napoleonic War Game Club is you assume you're looking at 150. Don't know what you got, but that's a reasonable guess. Never assume you've got 101 anyway. And so he's got 300 guys. I've got this many guys. But in column, which these guys are, that's not necessarily going to do a whole lot of damage to his horses. All right. Nah, we'll take a pass. <laughs> and infantry is not allowed to melee cavalry in unobstructed terrain, or that is not stacked with other units. So, your turn. <laughs> it's tuna. I didn't think you were going to be around. Velker is sitting over here. What you doing, Velker? Tuna's asking after you. What you doing? I'm looking at anime characters. He's watching anime characters. He's designing his own manga. And to Tuna's question, um, yes, with full fog of war on, you can't necessarily tell what it is you're sitting next to. I am not going to let Velker move pieces. Tuna wants to let you move pieces. He is reaching out his hand for my mouse. You are not helping. And again, for those watching my screen, you can see that line looks to be a better part of a brigade of infantry that Doug's got positioned towards the northern end of that escarpment. Not too far from there, there's a really nice Mexican restaurant. I do wonder how a Mexican restaurant made its way all the way to Salfeld, but what do I know? <laughs> It's also not too far away from there that uh, Louis Philippe, the man I was referring to earlier, the Prussian prince who would have been the... Uh, I think the battle at Jena Auerstadt would have been different had he lived. But he winds up getting into a horse battle with a quartermaster of one of the regiments here and gets stabbed. Yeah, it doesn't go well for him. Mm -mm. Better than for the Duke of Brunswick at Jena. Or at Auerstedt, I uh, should say. True. True. Gets, gets shot through both eyes. That takes doing. All right. Here we go. You know, I don't like... I don't like Prussian cavalry. <laughs> I really don't. Because for all the bad reputation the Prussians get after Jena Auerstedt, they had excellent troops and even better cavalry. Very good cavalry. Odd arguendo, the best in Europe, truthfully. Nah. We'll pass.
Yeah, not really any shooty shooty yet. I find your fire very offensive. All and right. there you go. Yeah. It's interesting, and I do rely one of the one of the things that is precious to me about the uh, really all of the Napoleonic games. For those who don't know, uh, you know, Doug and I have play tested a number of these over the years, and. Uh, one of the reasons we decided to do this is we are close. Can't we can't quite tell how we don't know how we're close to the release of uh, campaign Ilal, and the amount of work that goes into researching these orders of battle, these maps, is amazing. You know, it almost you wish the system was just a little bit better that it would be. Uh, a worthy partner of what is some of the best research you're going to find for any game. And I don't care whether that's a PC game or a board game or a miniatures game. Uh, I'm a big miniatures gamer. I know Doug has played them over the years. But the truth of the matter is, the maps we're playing on here are better than any tabletop is going to be. I mean, you're not going to get a level of granularity like this out of your tabletop right. battlefield. And... Uh, no kidding. Huh. Well, that's a kettle of fish. <laughs> How many can I get away with? Yes, I know I told you lot to form order, but now we found <laughs> Prussians. Don't give me that look. You bunch of tall plumage wearing losers well they are lights they by rights ought to be broken into skirmishers mm-hmm yeah you got this whole regiment or battalion I should say I keep saying regiment stop that bad Napoleon assist Good there, yep. Now this guy. Huh. I sense your intentions are not honorable. Uh, it depends on whose honor we're talking about. Well, you've got Marie Louise. I question her. She was a bit of a problem. Yeah. She had a little bitty thing, though. Did I send you that picture of her dress that's in Berlin? Yeah, yeah. Little bitty thing. Yeah. Well, I guess we found you anyway. Next. Whoa, mercy. Uh, one of the things I'm reacting to is that after my movement, then certain fog of war clears for me, and I just see uh, what a fine setup you have waiting for me. Oh, really? But of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, Tuna's commenting that he didn't realize you could do John Tiller games this way as opposed to PBM much better. Oh, yeah. Oh, are you kidding? And it's... Uh, well, well, Tuna, I'll lay one on you. You want to talk about my personal dreams that I haven't been able to fulfill in a long time. You can play this such that everybody who logs in commands a core. Now, that's not going to work for this because Lon just has one core here. But um, I have played Waterloo where five or six guys break it up and everybody commands their own troops. It's pretty awesome. Hmm. Nope. Nope. 
all you. And I like PBEM because it lets me play games. And, you know, Doug and I usually have two or three games going at a time. But there's nothing like this for keeping the flow of the battle in front of you. Yeah. I actually had an opportunity some years ago to play his midway game at a guy's house where we had 12 people splitting up the two sides. Now, that's too many for that game. I think eight would be about right, but it is pretty amazing uh, taking the relatively simple mechanics. I, it, I get it. It's not the, as realistic as something like CMANO and all that stuff, but it's it's still pretty cool. It's still pretty good. Yeah, it's it's good for what it is. And like I say, Simano still doesn't have multiplayer. Right. And, and this does, and, and the ability to do an entire Midway campaign where you're sitting there. I, I remember vividly sitting in my friend's dining room on one of the LAN, the uh, networked lap PCs. I was on my PC. Oh, where, where, where are they going? Where's your cavalry going? <laughs> Not there. Those we're just are... We're just getting to know each other. Yeah, those are, those are light cavalry. <laughs> <clears throat> I was not probably going to form line. <laughs> those are light cavalry. They're not sticking around. But yeah, I mean, sitting around with your white knuckle in the mouse, wondering where the Imperial Japanese Navy is and figuring out that they came up behind you. <laughs> that was pretty miserable. Well, we got four viewers now. I don't know who you are, but glad to see you. I know Bayonet's here. I know Tuna's here. But... All right. <clears throat> Over to you. Defensive fire. Yeah, I got nothing. Oh, you. I got something. Yeah, I know you do. Stupid gun, stupid. Hey, you should just count yourself happy that it's not my Russians at Friedland. Yeah, no kidding. Holy cats. Was that that short battery right down there? Yeah. Really? What is that? Holy. Yeah. Eight guns. Nice. Yeah. Eight guns, quality A, a full blown field artillery battery of six pounders. <laughs> Ow. Eight, eight six pounders. So, yeah, they'll, they'll uh, sort of give you a bad day. Yep. Okay. And no melee. And the other thing is, for those who might be familiar with other iterations of t or playing Tiller other ways, I guess, um, you because we're playing with manual defensive fire on rather than off the effectiveness of cannon fire is not split by the 50 percent that would be the case if manual defensive fire were off but you don't get multiple fires right right 
That thing in a MDF on game gets to shoot like a freaking machine gun. There we go. The other thing you try to learn in this game, and considering how many years is it for you, Doug, that you've been playing this system? Oh, man. A decade? More? Yeah. Well, you played... Did you play the original Battleground stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah so, I mean, that's that's approaching 30 years, just so you know. Right. <laughs> so... Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's and it's a set. I mean, yes, there are differences. I'm not disputing that, but you you just it's this issue hasn't changed. You got to be super careful with where you put your leaders. Mm hmm. What kind of cavalry you got over there? Oh, look at those guys. Ah. <sighs> See if our Prussian friends want to make a fuss. Okay. can only go so fast. What'd you give me? I accept. Folks are wondering what I'm fussing about. You cannot stack cavalry in disordering terrain, such as trees or cities, without disordering them. So if you're looking to stack, you've got to do it outside. We got five people watching. What's going on? Seriously? Kill the children and the only, luggage? It was the only thing I could shoot at. Seriously? <laughs> Ooh! Oh, that's that's and by the way, folks, that's a reduced shot because he's firing through skirmishers. Yep, that have been worse. And now the pew pew fight. <sighs> I knew that wasn't going to get me far. You always wonder who that guy is. 
He just Hans. falls over in line. Hans. Hans, Hans had a bad day. Yeah, you know, he's just just hanging out, minding his own business, defending a river line, and suddenly these skirmishers are hiding out in the weeds and they blast him. He's the one guy. He's like, he's in a unit of what? You got two hundred fifty odd guys lined yeah. up, defending a bridge. Nah, he don't make it. All right. Let's do this right. What do you got? Fie on goodness, fie. I can't believe you just started singing from Camelot. Well. Urban warfare hasn't gotten any easier in 200 years. No, it in fact it's uh not real easy here in eighteen oh five. You all ready to turn four, folks. One of the unfortunate things about the setup on my broadcast, in any event, is that I can't show the victory screen so that people know how we're doing in terms of points. Uh, the way this game goes, the French have the obligation of attack. They're the first side. Makes sense. Um, they, uh, they start out at a major defeat. They need 50 points to avoid that, turn it into a minor. 300 to turn it to a draw and 500 to become a minor victory long way from that right now is because i have sustained 150 infantry losses to doug's 14 i'm at negative 17 points and also i have no objectives but as we discussed earlier there's not enough objective points uh defense not if you take casualties anyway nope and i yeah and how precisely am I not going to take casualties? <laughs> I'm very curious to know how that works. Strong wishing. Yeah, hoping that my guys are all wearing blindfolds. Right. Good lord. For what we are about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Sweet, fancy Moses. Wow. <laughs> just, just, wow. <laughs> I, I don't know if I've ever seen that before where the parent unit of a bunch of deployed skirmishers is totally gone. I don't remember the Dorito marker I've got on my screen. Wow. 
Well, the, the Prussian artillery is uh, For real? covering itself in glory today. Yeah. No dispute there. Should we give the people the sound effects? What's that? I was wondering if I should give people sound effects, see if they like them. <laughs> I've got three watching over here. We've got a total of nine people watching? Well, I suspect that there are three that are on yours, too. Oh, true. If we got to double digits, I'll just faint. Yeah. You got some melees in mind, do you? Uh, I forgot. It popped up here, and the short answer would be no. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I, I want to know what that is, to tell you the truth. Uh... Yeah, the short answer on that would be no. Yeah, right. yeah I think... That's the thing of it. As if in 1805 or 1806 you're any more desirous to be sent into Salfeld to go dig out these Prussians that are dug in there like a tick. <laughs> Particularly in columns. Well, yeah. Because you can't go in in line. You won't hold it. Right. Yeah, gonna... yeah, try to form line. Good luck with that. Let me know how it turns out. I'm assuming. No fooling! Well, heck fire, Melvin. But as we're here, a little job to do. I was wondering if you were going to do something about that. somebody who knows when they first figured out how to do this move the whole column on a road thing because these guys were no fun to move before that happened yeah and there there's a couple of the games that that still really doesn't apply or it's right. very difficult to do it right hmm
For those who didn't want a game that moved slowly, we have given you that. Gah! Just looked at my point totals. <laughs> Let me tell you how I feel about that. And just in case anybody's curious why it's really worth my skirmishers firing like this, aside from the small amount of casualties that it causes, it can also disorder his guys. So skirmishers can be useful from that perspective to disorder attacking enemy infantry that's Formed. Doesn't always happen, but it can. Yep. And when it does, it really sucks. Yep. All right. Grab that horse artillery. I gotta shoot at you first. Show me. I've come to love this particular dialogue. Oh yeah, that's what I want. There you go. Had to get that party started. This this little section just west of Southfeld must be flat as a fritter. Yeah. Well, they're horse guns. Yep. They are horse guns. What my friend is laughing about is his guns ran away from me. <laughs> my my limbered guns did more damage to your column than you did to them. Yep. Yeah. That that's that's a that's a bum deal, is what that is. Ah, mercy me. How oh, well. Some days are diamonds. No, you will go here. And you 
sort of wish there was an easy substitute for digging you out like this, but there isn't. Mm-mm. There really is not. Oh. Ooh, that that didn't. That that, that wasn't the plan. What do you do? of that little fight <laughs> one guy gets killed another guy dies but the, your guys decide you know what it's just not worth it right and there you are already getting ready to leave oh well see how many fish I can catch Your turn. Oh, hey, somebody ran away. Oh, so, oh, so they did. One of your skirmishers decided they'd had enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they saw their one guy die and left. And that was too much for them. It was it. <laughs> yeah, Graham Ford just stopped by to say six people watching, new record. I think it is. <laughs> because you, you have to bear in mind that uh, Doug's got his feet up too. So how many you got? I got uh, two watching now. Okay, so we're gonna we're flipping back and forth. We still have not crossed the sacred 10 list. And to Red Zone, uh, one of these days very, very soon, uh, next week we're going to do... The rematch for the Battle of Abu Klea because Tuna can't be with us for a little bit after that. But one of these days, very, very soon, uh, do we have a link for Doug? I've got your link, don't I? You sent it to me. Oh, the technology. There it is. Crappy Prussian infantry. <laughs> or are they disordering in line? Yes. It's my favorite. One of the things that this game makes you pay for, and it's accurate, is that if you attempt to maneuver in line, you run a decent risk, depending on the quality of your troops, of disordering. The really heebie-jeebie thing in this game, though, and uh, Doug and I are playing the Battle of Auerstedt elsewhere, is when you are in a threat zone, which is to say when you've got enemy to your front and you try to change formation, that can be real bad. You can have a unit go from good order to rout. Mm-hmm. Uh, for Brandon, Abu Klea, yeah, uh, last week we did, uh, uh, last week we played uh, the men who would be kings in Tabletop Simulator uh, using some really cool mods, and we did the, uh, we did the battle, for, remember Burnaby, and unfortunately I screwed up a bunch of the rules, but it, it was a fun, fast-playing game, I think we wrapped the whole thing in under three hours. So it was, uh, we had five, four players, five players. It's a good time. And as Tuna's pointing out, he even ordered the uh, rule book. No, it's a great set of rules. It's, it's, it's certainly now my favorite for Colonial, surpassing the immortal Sword in the Flame. Uh, Brent is asking, who is more likely to cheat and watch the other feed, Doug or Jim? 
Yeah, not really either one of us. Yeah, no, I think, frankly, I'm more curious to see Doug's mods because I've not seen them all in place. So I do want to see that, but, uh, okay, nobody left here. Oh, I get Tuna and Red Zone. My feed. Five watching on this side. Nice. Oh, Alan. Yep, now it's time to start getting out of the way. <laughs> it's no fun when the other side's got guns. You said no cannons for the French. That's what you said. <laughs> That's right. Or you got guns now. Ah, uh, no effect gunfire. How I love you so. Yeah, skirmishers against skirmishers in town are not happening. pretty ineffective. That's a Roger. That is a Roger. It's interesting how few guns Lon had. Yeah, the the, the French even at this time, which is really you know, the height of the Grand Armée. Yep. We're not exactly artillery rich. Right. Right. That was in your face. Yeah, I... Holy jeez, you and that... Is that gun in that stack? Yeah. Okay. Jeez. Yeah, it's some uh, some battalion guns, basically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but to... Uh, to Brandon's point... Yeah, Abu Klea I love just because I've happened upon... There's a... You can get it on... <laughs> <laughs> the only way flying sails is going to get sounds is if Doug and I make them with our mouths. <laughs> which which could happen. We could do it. You know, if you're if that's what will draw your red zone, we'd love to do it. You kidding? Yes. <laughs> ding ding. We could we we could play. Yeah, we could play some ambient. Yeah, yeah. Ocean music. I, I've done that a couple of times when I've been playing uh, <laughs> Sales of Glory. Red Zone, do it. <laughs> As if we wouldn't. But no, the, uh, but no to, to Brandon's point about Abu Clea, uh, there's this YouTube, you can get the whole CD on YouTube. It's called The British Redcoat. It's, it, it, is, it enrages me that you can't buy it commercially. You just have to play it on YouTube. Um, but it's an amazing collection of all these classic British marching tunes, mostly from the period of Empire, one or two older. But um, it's got this song called Colonel Burnaby on it, and it got me looking into it and introduced me to Burnaby, who's an absolute lunatic, um, and his neat story. So, yeah, we're going to go back to Abu Clea in a week. But eventually, to uh, Red Zone's point, we've got, um, I've got a Battle of the Nile set done. And we're going to use Fighting Sail, another great new Osprey game for that. Doug and I, if you check back through our other videos, we actually did a, a demo game of Fighting Sail, and we liked it a lot. Oh, no, I got guys checking. Yeah, it's a, that's, a, that's a good system. It's a good system for what it is too. I mean, if you want if mm -hmm. you want ship to ship fights, it's not your it's not your Huckleberry. But if you're interested in, uh, if you want a good fleet action system, it's, yeah, it's very good for that. And it's and as I have threatened, we are we will assuredly do um, Trafalgar come October because there is a complete Trafalgar set. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't like that you disordered me. 
That fills me with no small amount of rage. <laughs> you guys that I want to be here. I think it would be the courteous thing to do for you all to leave. Uh, we're probably going to do that. Yeah, but not until I can kill you. <laughs> no, the idea is we're leaving a lot faster than that. fun until somebody brings an artillery piece. Yeah, the game does a nice job of capturing just how how important artillery is. Right. And the there's no there's absolutely no disputing the fact that the ability to sight guns is an art. Mm -hmm. uh, my buddy Andy from England, against whom I play all the time and have for a long time now, he is, he just sees the terrain. He just sees it. And it drives me nuts. <laughs> what turn are we on? Uh, one third the way home already. Oh yes, uh, to Red Zone's point, this game absolutely has a ton of elevation. Um, I could show you, if you look over here, oh, okay. if you notice right here, when I left click on this base, it shows you an elevation of 760 meters, and this base, it's 860, so you've got a 100 meter climb on this very steep escarpment. It affects, it affects line of sight. Yes, it costs significantly much more to go uphill than down. It also depends on the steepness of the incline. It also depends what formation you're in. Um, also, depending on the steepness of the incline, infantry in line can disorder, like we were talking about, and that chance goes up the steeper it is. Tuna, what do you mean that they don't move? What doesn't move? Offensive fire. Don't mind if I do.
I did so few casualties on that one, I didn't even report them. <laughs> you should be ashamed. You and everyone that looks like you. All right. We're going to do it now. Don't make me angry. Is this your... No, it's not. Uh... You got the guns that time. Yeah, I did. It was the, that's where the uh, no, they weren't. I thought those were the runaway. That was those were those battalion guns. Yeah. And a pair the thing, of four pounders. To to Doug's earlier point, the flip side of this game understands how important guns are. It does indeed, and losing guns is expensive. guy leave scenario. <laughs> All right, just take that. We're in positive numbers now. You are. Yeah, just just take that. Uh no. Now what? Now what indeed? Nobody left. Yeah, got a couple of guys decided to get out of Dodge. Did you? I just can't see them. Hmm. All right. And again, what Doug is referring to is that at the start of each movement phase is when you're evaluated for route. Um, you get two chances to dis undisorder, but you only get one. Ch you only have to check once for route. It looks like uh, maybe somebody scampered. They're, uh, to Brandon's point, they're firing through skirmishers. They're not firing through foreign troops. You cannot fire through foreign troops. In fact, I wanted to fire, if you're looking at my screen, I wanted to fire at the battalion that's deployed just to the right of the, that's deployed just, that is deployed just to the right of the victory point or to the left of the victory point, and I couldn't because my former troop had moved in front of it. And to Tuna's point, uh, if you move in line, you can be disrupted. You will not automatically be disrupted. Oh, now what is this gibberish? I can see you doing this. <laughs> If if you believe for one second that I am not going to get up to my usual light cavalry tricks.
I think I've already mentioned how much I hate it when I can't see what you're doing. That's another thing I do like about this game a lot, and I find myself in this situation more than I'd like to confess. Getting caught in line can be a problem. Depending on the situation. Yeah, it can, and, you know, one of the big challenges for the Prussians at, in 1805 is... If you're going to play it all historically, mm -hmm. they don't fight in column. Right. Um, furthermore, their morale and everything else is such that thinking that you're going to use them in a assault capacity in column anyway doesn't work. So even if you wanted to play a historically, it doesn't do any good because the the Prussians won't stand for it. What the heck is they that? Will. <laughs> that skirmisher you just moved. Yeah, the... yeah, he, he's that guy that historically got sent way out on the flank. Let me tell you how this road where he just came from is one of the scariest experiences I've had driving a vehicle ever. <laughs> we were climbing up, 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 up into that mountain. And the next thing you know, we act, we saw a sign that said, one, one lane only. And there was no ready way to determine if there was a car coming the other direction. Oh, joy. And I said, yeah, you know what? Mm -mm. That, I want to go up there, but not that badly. Let me see if I can show. Yeah, you know, I can, I think. And Brandon, to your point, that's what that gun can see. So as you can tell, he's blocked by these guys. But not by the unformed skirmishers. Which strikes me as about right. Defensive fire. Defensive fire. Defensive fire. Where have all my Prussian playmates gone? <laughs> well, there's one of them, I suppose. So we weren't hanging around. You're gonna make me limber my damn guns.
Shooty McShooterson. Gotta love Mir Der Horse Artillerin. There's they are those infantries are neither short nor skinny. They are deployed in open <laughs> formation. Short and skinny. <laughs> Which as Tuna points out is entirely better than being shot. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> okay, this is just weedy behavior on your part. You know this. You guys are leaving. <laughs> yeah, well... There wasn't a whole lot of reason for the Prussians to have fought here in the first place. Well, right. They didn't. Except, well, except Louis Philippe, or Louis Ferdinand. Louis Ferdinand yeah. just, just figured, I'm going to turn around and I, I'm not afraid. That's right. And he had specific orders to get his butt on the other side of that river. Yep. And by the time he got those orders, it was too late. He was engaged. Well, I am believing, I am going to. Work off the principle that I have received those orders. <laughs> Do you have any melees? Uh, no. No, I don't see Please. that. There'd be really any point to that. Okay. Okay, look. Intemperate Prussian git. Stopped your cavalry, though, didn't it? I am not going to let you lurk in my rear. <laughs> it's not going to happen. My statement stands. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> ah. All right, they're going to do that. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. Now I'm in the wild position of having skirmishers that can't reform. Right. Because for those just joining us, Doug killed all of them. Well, of their parent body. Let the record reflect. One of the things you always have to be very careful about doing in this game, to the extent you can, because you can't always, is breaking up your units. Because good gravy knows. Because good gravy knows you need to try to keep people in range of their commanders so that they can be rallied. And 
if you fail in that, you can have some real long-term morale problems. Alright, I will explore later what you guys are facing the wrong way. But your point about line and column is, is well taken. I mean, it's a, if there is a criticism into which the Tiller Napoleonic games fall, certainly one of the greatest of them must be that he makes no distinction here between road column, attack column, column of divisions, any of the other... Right columnar formations that certainly did exist. Uh, so it did. Right, right. And, and I won't lie, I have found myself less than artful over the years trying to determine, you know, if you read the tactics guide, it says line was essentially a defensive formation. Well, that's not entirely true. In fact, as you correctly say, for those armies you, that used an older form of uh, organization, it's not true at all. Right. Um, it's, you know, one of the great innovations Charles comes up with in the 1809 campaign is this weird battalion square that's uh, essentially a ginormous attack column. I have here. What are you? Oh, yeah. You, yeah, that's what I thought. All right. Well, where'd we get to? Turn seven of 18 before we got a really busy one. Oh, well, now, Doug, tremble before me, my pioneers have arrived. <laughs> I, I, you know, like I say, you know, Doug and I have playtested these games for a long time, and played these games for longer, but there are times when it's like, yes, I get it. They had, they had a company of engineers in the OOB, but for God's sake. What exactly am I going to do with these guys? And sometimes they're useful. I mean, if it's a scenario with a, a you know a bridge problem, uh -huh. but... you have you have you have laid your hand on the thing that I think makes me question their presence. Yeah. All right. Enough talking. More giving over to Doug. Uh, to Tuna's question, supply in the Napoleonic games runs entirely from the supply units. 
you have to have in order to use them? Well, the first thing is you're you're going to need them if you go low on ammo. That's the uh, that's that's what's uh, that's a percentage chance every time the unit fires. Then to get your uh, ammo back, you have to be within a certain proximity of the supply unit when uh, it gets to the resupply portion of the phase, which is right at the end of the turn. The other thing I will observe about that is that that is why I don't like playing as you can do where you get victory points for supply units. It seems to me that you can punish sufficiently if you suddenly can't resupply your units. Brant's using our uh, our gunfire to scare the kids at the concession stand at work. So good, definitely. We definitely want more artillery, more shooting. Yeah, we, Brant, we, we almost need to switch over to Friedland. <laughs> no thanks. You for the we. Uh, I, I think it's pretty well known now that that game is coming out fairly shortly and. I was looking back. You and I have been playtesting that sucker for a long time. We have been we have been playtesting the Battle of Friedland for over a year. Yeah, now we've done it twice, and it's a big freaking battle. But um, one of the things that can be seen and people will see when they play it is that the Russians have guns, lots and lots of guns, an or, ungodly number of tubes. I. Uh, or borrowing uh, from Gary Oldman in The Professional, they brought everybody. Mm, yeah. All right. That's that. Now this. All right, you. Aggravating result in all the tiller games. <laughs> Lose the melee, but oh, I, I won the pushback. Great, thanks. That's right. <laughs> thanks. You're my favorite jerk. You. No, as a matter of fact, you know what? You. those guys those guys are uh, the first battalion of infantry regiment 48 from Hess castle well, well done gentlemen I salute you that was a better and they're only uh they're only a quality C unit man you got a heck of a die roll then mm -hmm. who's to complain on your end I'm sure go that's kind of what we had in mind oh my god yeah i feel a little bad about this nah you shouldn't because i didn't think you'd get that moved up that far I, I feel a little bad just a little okay it's historical that's fair and you know what uh no he was further north but it's not yeah. far 
It's not, not far. It's not far. Here we go. Ah! Hey. So That's a big loss, too. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just curious what happened to him. Let's see here. Leader casualties. Captured him. He lives. Well, there you go. He's not dead anyway. Yeah. This is a better outcome for him than historically. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to get him completely out of the way, and I thought, no, I'll stop him there. He's not close enough to get there. And then you moved up, and I was like, yeah, this is this is going to suck. <laughs> oh, Louis. Louis, Louis. You were given very explicit orders. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Did I forget anything? I don't think I did. I think I did. And again, yeah, Doug, right. and I, Doug and I are yucking it up, but just so you all know what happened if you can't figure it out, um, he had Louis Ferdinand, who was the commander, who did die in this battle, and... Uh, he, he didn't make it out of this one either. Man, you ain't kidding. These VP Lokes are peanuts. Yeah, they're nothing. They are absolutely nothing. You gotta kill Prussians to win this one. Yep. Which, I mean, admittedly... Reflects the reality sure. that, you know, this just wasn't worth fighting for. Right. The reason this is a Prussian loss is is twofold. One, well, I suppose it's threefold. It's Louis Ferdinand. Uh, number two, the fact that you lost as many troops as you actually did. Right. And, and three... It was the first, you know, I'm listening to uh, John Keegan's History of Warfare. And he's discussing why the Mongols were so successful. And one of the conclusions he draws is just that they kept winning because nobody thought they could be beaten. Right. You know, they, they fight, yeah. they win they win several battles without ever fighting. And Napoleon, after Austerlitz, has this air of, oh, he can't be beaten, he's amazing, he's this miracle worker in battle. And the Prussians convince themselves, no, no, we got this, we're the heirs of Frederick the Great. And the word comes back, no, we just got crushed at Saalfeld, first battle out, and Louis Ferdinand is dead. Right. Right. Right, exactly. down to four on my feed how many you got uh four 
All right. Lord, you have some big battalions. Uh, yeah. Prussian and Austrian battalions tend to be pretty damn big. In Commanding Colors Napoleonics, the Russian Guard Grenadiers get this one unit that has six blocks. Oh, wow. Fights with seven dice. It's a bad freaking day. Mm-hmm. I call it the French Cavalry Killer. <laughs> or the old Guard Killer, for that matter. Yeah. Well, where are you going? I thought we were going to do something over here. Uh, no. These are like cavalry. They don't fight. I swear. They harass. They annoy. Oh, they're succeeding. <laughs> Is mommy coming home? There you go. Yeah, defensive fire. Super. Boop. Those guys, those guys. I'm sure I can't see anything. Cannot. You have run away. <laughs> I don't blame you. I want to be clear. Or as they said in Red Versus... If there is nothing for the Prussians to win by holding right. the field here. Right, right. It's a legitimate strategy. All right. Jerk. This is about as Hail Mary as it gets, but... What's that? Oh, I think you had to. Oh, yeah. And what are you going to do? Stand there and die? Exactly. Uh, Brant, this is um, campaign 
Yena Auerstadt. We're, we're playing the Saulfeld scenario. And there is no mod to make the Prussians purple. Right. Uh, that's, uh, that's it. All to you. Whoa. Something crazy just happened. What a mess that is. Did you crash and burn? No, no, no. It just we had a whole bunch of routes and things. Oh. Well, we certainly have this one to deal with. But first... Man, I'm going to hate myself for this when this game is over. <laughs> I just know I'm going to. Yeah, but you're disordered. Would be what? Point being that two squadrons of Prussians have now tied up uh, six squadrons of French cavalry. Yeah, but they're that again though. To your point, they're these freaking hussars. You know, yep. Which, yep. That th those aren't cuirassers. No, they're not, and they would not be at all useful for you in trying to break Prussian units. That's my point. But they would be useful in running down routers. Yeah. that are on the field. Proud to say I'm further north than I've been in our past games. At this point in the battle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, last time you attacked Croston. Right. And you actually concentrated your whole core to the south this time. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to move with angry energy, if that's really a thing. Well, and you didn't spend so much time with this, so many units messing around in Saulfeld. Correct. What you got there? Where's that guy? Oh, there it is. He was... He was a... This skirmisher was afraid of cavalry, and I'm going... Where's this cavalry you're afraid of? Yeah, they're out there. Oh, yeah. Affirmative. Routing skirmishers crack me up. Mm-hmm. It's like, where do you think you guys are going? Right.
mention I'm gonna hate myself for this later. Why purple? <laughs> because. There have now been a couple games. The most notable being uh, the recent, very lovely uh, Glenn Frank Drover victory. Uh, where, for some strange reason, folks didn't take the obvious Prussian color, which is and chose to make the Prussians purple. Whoa. Not every day you see skirmishers take 10 casualties. Yeah, those guys took a pretty brutal hit. Absolutely anybody that I want to shoot at you. Yeah. <laughs> I have these wee fellows. Shooting at routed guys, I don't know, but. Keeps them routed. Not that well, those guys they're, were gonna. They're, they're dead anyway, but. Right. That just occurred to me. <laughs> For those following along at home, units that are both routed and isolated when meleeed lose automatically. He's going to route, though. Yeah. No, I frankly would have been to your advantage to dislodge. <laughs> I mentioned I was going to hate myself for that. I think I did. <laughs> Nope. 
All right, and my little chevauchee over here. Prussian artillery are clearly made up of grenadiers. They are. I got one of them. I got one of them, but uh, they're certainly a nimble bunch. Mm-hmm. That's not even horse artillery. That was really wow. Nope. Well it, done. They are they are considered light guns, but those are six pounders. Credit credit to them. Yeah, that was ugly. That was altogether better. Nasty cavalry losses on that one. Not unhappy about that. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. They didn't debooch for some reason that evades me. You annoy me. mountain just to get to a draw. Jeepers. Crap. Yeah, it is. Mm. It is. Mm -hmm. Alright. Well, let's see how many of you goofies decide you want to go. A few of you. Yeah, and I'm kind of okay with guys routing at this point. Yep. Especially if they route somewhere inconvenient. I mean, geez louise, what is it? Only this northernmost crossing is a... Is a 50-pointer. 50. Yeah, there's just no victory points on the board. Not many. Not, not for the hill you gotta climb.
Defensive fire. All right. I think we can safely call that desultory. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Tuna, in fact, not only can you attack in column in this game, but the preferred formation for attacking is in column. Um, the, the major innovation, one of the major innovations of the French in the Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars were uh, the use of attack columns versus uh, lines. And uh, we were talking about this earlier, that the Prussians, particularly in 1805, still fought as they fought during the Seven Years' War. Uh, so they were schooled in linear tactics and really did not use attack columns. One of the problems with this game is that it doesn't differentiate between attack columns and march columns and columns of companies and all the other kinds of formations. There's simply a column formation. Um, so you marching along the road, you're in column formation, well, you would actually be in road column. Um, and there really ought to be a slower moving attack column forum that is uh, formation, which is still more nimble than lines, but not as, uh, you know, can't move as far as, as road column, but there's only two states in the game. Um, so when you compare this to um, the, the Seven Years War game or the Revolutionary War game, where you can't attack if you're in column, that's because that was during the linear warfare period. Uh, and the attack column had not been developed yet. And there's... The other problem is I think we're running, if I recall correctly, these are... These are 10 minute turns. Uh, yeah, I believe so. And as a consequence, there's a lot of stuff that would go on. Mm-hmm. Uh in 10 minutes that's hard to sort of sort out i guess for want of a better phrase um that would all blend into this thing that we're talking about with respect to road column march column yeah you'd uh, you'd approach it march column you'd move to a column of divisions typically depending on the nature of the attack and then you'd shake out although in truth the French attacked in in line or fought in line f 
far more than some people would have you believe. Oh, they fought in line quite frequently, and, uh, you know, it, there, there's a really good section in uh, the Osprey book on Prussian tactics, talking about the French at, uh, oh gosh, uh, actually talking about the French at uh, Auerstadt. Okay. And the attack on uh, that village we've been fighting over. Hassenhausen. Yeah, Hassenhausen. And how the division that was tasked with that, um, you know, changed its formation multiple times to do different things. Yes. Um, and, and so, yes, it was. Now, there's also a really good uh, write-up. I can't remember where this is, but it talks about how the French in the peninsula were often too late in deploying in the line. Um, and so were subject to really withering British fire against their approach columns when they probably should have been in line uh, well before they got into range. Uh, and it's it's worth remembering that throughout the war, throughout the Napoleonic Wars, uh, the British always fought in line. Yes. And they fought in a shallower line at that. Mm-hmm. But it's because of that problem the French had shaking out of the line that you got this false narrative that the British line beat the French column. It's not right. that the French were coming in column, it's that they just couldn't get there. And especially, you know, in 1806, which is what we're looking at right here, you're talking about the best troops that Napoleon ever commanded. And these guys were highly skilled, highly drilled at shaking out from column into line and then delivering fire and also doing it very, very quickly. And had been doing it for, you know, the Grand Armée has been doing this really for a decade, since the 1790s. Mm -hmm. And as a consequence, you know, they, they had these skills. By the time you get to the Marie Louise's of 1813, 1814, 1815, shoot, anytime really after Wagram, 1809, you're starting to see guys that were less able to do that. And it has been said that one of the reasons for the repulse of the old guard at Waterloo is that they were shaking, they were trying to shake out into line. Right. And wound up getting shot to the front side and to the sides, which caused them to crumble and run. I'm correct that I cannot reform those guys, right? Because their base is gone. I I don't. I, I imagine if you. I mean, if you've got two skirmishers together, it's worth trying to see. But that was my thought: is if the parent unit's gone, I don't know how you can reform them. I don't. I don't think yeah, it works. I, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Killing. 
doing some Prussian dunes. That sucked. You will be the gift. You will be the guest of the French army. Oh! Oh! oh, oh. When did that happen? Oh, nerds. Not happy about that at all. I wish to register a complaint. I know I can't. Still makes me angry. <laughs> Alright, down here. Down here, you. There we go. Lots of running away. Ooh. Ooh, that's more than I thought. Well, Tuna's out. Good night, Tuna. You had some bad rolls up here. Did your boys retreat past the escarpment? Uh, which boys? The ones that I just meleeed last turn. Because there are some guys that I meleeed that are not there right now. Uh, yeah, very likely. Wow. And this escarpment in the, I guess in the real deal, is, uh, it's pretty remarkable, actually. What's that? The escarpment that, oh. that runs along here is actually remarkably steep. It's how I knew I was standing at the at the uh, end of the at the north end of the battlefield.
and particularly Volsdorf and Crosten, but also also to, over to Au Amberg. These these uh, it's Crosten particularly that's really down in a ravine. Just killed twelve dudes. Movement phase, you say. Dog. Duh. <laughs> that right there. Okay. You let me down too? No. You.
You're not leaving me with baskets and baskets of choices, you know. Uh, I think that was the idea. Okay. I thought maybe, you know, at some point along the line we could... <laughs> Uh, just, just in case you were wondering, you cannot <laughs> reform once you, lo you lose the parent unit. Just... Which, uh, I mean, admittedly is a little silly. But Yeah, you would think you'd be able... Well, look, skirmishers are already able to do things that are too loosey-goosey. Yeah. So I think the idea is that if you let them go that far, it'll be completely out of control. They never, they never have put the, you know, put them on a leash like a lot of people think right. they should be. Right. Which I've argued, I understand it out on the field of battle, but I don't understand it from the perspective of now we're going to do it with you guys holding this this town. Right. You know, you would detach guys to do that. Uh, absolutely, you would, and. You know, the, the answer to that complaint about skirmishers is that's why you have cavalry. Right. Or, you know, if they're sitting inside a chateau, well, then right. they, they eventually had to do, you know, who was holding La Haye San? Those weren't, formed, right. those weren't formed troops. Right, exactly. It, it's I, I don't I don't I don't agree with the you know oh skirmishers need to be leashed and if if you are gonna move them far away from their parent unit and your opponent won't or can't for some reason use his cavalry to punish you for that yeah well I was, I was playing a uh, game had an online game against. Uh, one of the folks from Armchair Dragoons, and I wound up sweeping up, I think, 350 of his skirmishers in a single cavalry charge. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because he, cause he had them deployed in the open field in front of his troops. And I said, that that is what, if you let me get so far, and we were playing with MDF on, so it's not like, you know, my guys had wings or anything, they had to move right. deliberately. But if you give me that much time, I'll, I, will, right. I will absolutely maul your, maul and, your skirmishers. There's no doubt of that. And, and that's what would have happened. Yes. So, you know. I think we're all good Napoleonic here. warfare is very rock, pepper, scissors, and <laughs> yeah, you gotta... That's, that's true. You know? Cavalry in open greater than... Okay. What have I screwed up? Probably something. And I also do like the rule that skirmishers will not approach that close to formed cavalry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're not For a doing, very good reason. We're not doing that. That ends badly. All right. Your turn. Not that he's, uh, not that he did particularly any good that time, but. Yeah, explain that to the three. <laughs> Holy. What? Yeah. Well, see, that's so the thing. I'm sorry, what? See, these guys are in extended line. They're not just in oh, line. Yeah, They're yeah, in yeah, extended they line. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. And... I get how a lot of people don't like that because, sure, they're vulnerable to melee, but 
they're going to cut you up pretty badly in the process. Oh, yeah. It's more the fact that you got two, you know, you got 350 of them and they're disordered. Yeah, yeah. But that's that, uh, this, this has Castle Boys again. They, uh. Yeah. You just did, didn't you? You jerk. Yeah, son of a gun. Disordered you, didn't I? Oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> well, it said that I had been disordered. Look, there's only one guy that could have done it. a little something. Yeah, see, that's what cavalry sp or artillery is supposed to do. Not three. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. Not three. Shoot all you guys. I did. Next. He's been slowly making his way back. Aggravated by that. And you. Oh, it's going to be like that, is it? That's got to be a sickening feeling when they deploy the guns. <laughs> you, you know it's coming.
I will say the impulse of the game is almost the inverse of what it was for Louis Ferdinand at the day of the battle. He wanted to fight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely he did. He shouldn't have, but he wanted to. I mean, he, he needed to get that army out of there. Yep. It's pretty much as simple as that, and he elected not to. But he really needed to. Finally got past you in infantry losses. I don't know what those 70 guys in extended line look like. <laughs> Skirmishers. Sure. Reenactors. Yeah, right. Pounder, yeah, they're four pounders. I tell you, I got a three pound shot in my desk from the Civil War. Oh, do you? Yeah, gift <laughs> for my head. Who knew I was into such things? Taken off the bottom of one of the sounds in the Carolinas. By one yeah, of oh yeah, you did, yeah, you did mention that, yeah. From the employees used to scuba dive. Not as many as I wanted. This game is not doing what I want it to. to the logic of why cavalry auto disorders when a stack crosses a bridge. I believe the thought process is uh, because they're deployed in squadron line and when you stack them 
and try and cross a bridge, you're trying to shove more than one squadron, which would have to narrow down to get across the bridge mm -hmm. in the same space, and so they disorder. All right. Or what's happening is that because they can't all fit across the bridge, a portion of that squadron is going across the bridge, but a portion is going across the stream. So that, again, this... there's not enough room. Yeah. Right. I, I thought it might have something to do along those lines. You know, sort of the notionally, these guys would be in a long column. Right. And instead, they're doing this thing. Um, I, I don't remember if it does the same thing in Labatt, but it does the same thing in Bar. Does it? In fact, you can disorder... Uh, again, just like in this game, you can disorder uh, infantry in line by trying to get them to go across a bridge. Hmm. infantry in line obviously doesn't like to go across a bridge going back to my earlier point I'm curious to know what that would look like I didn't expect that to go that well okay some thought. That's right. That's right. The engineers have made it to the fray. <laughs> you better step back. They will. They will get out their transoms and surveying equipment. <laughs> <laughs> and when that happens, boy. Yeah, you better move. You know, fooling around now. Oh, gravy. Does your mommy know you're playing artillerist, son? <laughs> Same question. <laughs> More casual than the guns. Thank <laughs> you. 
and you. I was gonna say, the, the as you correctly say, route is not exactly a problem at this point. Right. going <laughs> not there where are you going fritz get get over here We are going to shoot our way out of this mess. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I do love my light troops. These guys. <laughs> we are just coming through, hoping to visit Salfel for the, for the autumn so, fair. There's some very nice beer in the Salfeld. Yeah, that's what we have heard. 150 knobs. skirmishers come on now <laughs> i suppose it has to ask
interesting. Didn't even ask me if I wanted to. Oh, okay. Hang on a second. Why did all of a sudden? Hmm. And the other two, it didn't even ask me if I wanted to shoot at the routed unit. Yeah, I, I think it preferentially, I've noticed that um, in a couple of other games too, preferentially avoids the routed unit if there's a quasi-ordered unit in there. I'm not sure how any of that worked, but okay. <laughs> I think you just screamed curses really loudly. Yeah, well, that's that's it. They they simply frightened them away. Four four of my guys shot themselves, <laughs> and it so frightened your men that they ran off. <laughs> These guys are crazy. <laughs> right. Yep. Modestly curious what disordered skirmishers look like, but I digress. you just might be running out of time. <laughs> I am threatened by the fierce pioneers. 
You're darn right you are. Saul failed the battle that will go down in history for the valiant charge of the French engineers. <laughs> that's, that's my plan. I'm sure my... there is I'm sure there is a 19th century painting of the uh, charge of the sappers. <laughs> what are you talking about? Le Gros at um, Hougamont. You know, Sergeant Le Gros, the swinging yep. that axe. Yep. You know, we are coming and coming for real. We are the sappers. Fear us. <laughs> well, I will say this for myself. I've at least put myself in striking distance of a draw. <laughs> <laughs> That's and we may end up we may end up having to call it. It's eleven o'clock here, so is it? Right. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Well, or or we can save it and pick it up another time. Yeah, we can. There's another phase. You want to just go uh, see? You want to go through the end of the turn? Yeah, let's do that. All right. Wow! What the? Oh, hell! Well, and they're shortened. Yeah. Huh. All right. Is what is. Well, you know what? We got column. We got uh, target density modifier. That's on, what it we? is. That's exactly what it is. Yep. Yep. Uh, Observe that. Target. Yep. yep. That's right. Stack them up. I'll shoot them. I'll shoot them. Yeah, I got 1,200 dudes, 1,300 dudes standing in close mm -hmm. ranks. Yep. That's right. I have shot your sapper. It's <laughs> that was the guy out in the front with the apron. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you certainly disordered somebody. Let me guess where. No. Really? That's a surprise. All right, stay focused. Firing, 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 firing. Take that. Ouch. Yeah, he is finally starting to rack up fatigue. I don't like it. All right, here we go. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's, that's, that's quite a stand. That... Uh, yeah, especially since they were facing the other direction. Yeah, part of that's the fatigue of the one unit, to be sure. Mm. They've been marching a long way. No doubt. All right, let's see how we get a little luckier here.
Yeah, I'm uh, I'm impressed. You should be. That uh, that brigade's holding on. Okay, we all saw that coming. Surprising that they took 20 out with them. Yeah, especially in the clear. Yeah. the other way yeah all right well that has not advantaged me at all <laughs> at all well, let's see yeah I, you're one point ahead of where you were yeah let's uh Let's have a click of the turn and see what we get here. Oh, at least some of those folks left. All right, well. You want me to save it here? Yeah, let's save it here. Okay. Let me do that. And I'm then the host, we can. Right? <laughs> uh, yeah, you're the host. All right. So there it is. So we could save live game. There we go. All right. Let's take a look back out to the feed and show it. Well, show everybody the state of the battle. Uh, unfortunately, we can't show you the victory points. That doesn't work that way. But uh, right now, the French hold a hundred, one hundred victory points. Uh, the Allies have lost nine. Uh, it shows on it shows on my oh uh, no it doesn't no it does it, it doesn't pick up the window doesn't. Yeah. 29 more prussians have died uh i have a there's a substantial advantage almost a hundred cavalry uh four guns to the french zero uh supplies are about where ne negligible of course the big difference really is the uh mm -hmm. the death of the prussian commander or the capture of the prussian mm -hmm. commander uh, current status, as we said, a major defeat is 50, a minor defeat is 300. So it's right now 208 points for the French. Uh, they are 92 points away from achieving a draw. And this is an overall look at the battlefield. Very good. Well, we are saved and uh, we'll see everybody the next time. Thanks, everybody, for dropping in. Thank you.